Hi everyone, and welcome back to Macaroon. I'm sure all of you remember the nano bubble hype from last year, and I recently figured out a way to make similar bubbles without using any nano tape. It's super easy, great fun, and reusable. I also decided to experiment a bit further and try to make transparent bubbles in different shapes. This was a bit trickier, but I ended up with this adorable-looking duck bubble. And of course, at the very end of this video, I'll show you what it looks like when you pop these. So the only thing you need for this DIY are bath bombs. They can be any size, but you want to get the cheaper ones without any toys inside. Bath bombs with stuff inside them often have a second layer of packaging like a capsule, and you won't be able to remove that without destroying the plastic. So the easiest option is just to get basic bath bombs without anything inside. If you look on the outside, they're usually little bumps where the shrink plastic has been sealed. Cut off one of these corners to create a tiny hole. This should only be a few millimeters wide. Now you've got two options on how to empty the bubble. If you want to have it right away, then just submerge the bath bomb and use your fingers to help everything dissolve. This will take a bit longer than you might expect because the opening is so small. You'll have to keep it underwater for about 15 to 20 minutes. Eventually, you'll end up with just a plastic wrapper, so give it a good rinse and it's ready to go. And of course, for anyone thinking that this is a waste of the actual bath bomb, nothing has been wasted at all. Be sure to keep the bowl where you dissolved everything inside, and this is still perfectly good to use for a bath. Another option is to dissolve the bath bomb while you're in the bath yourself. The second method is the one I prefer because there's virtually zero work involved. Just like before, cut a tiny hole into the plastic. Then drop it in a bowl of water and leave it overnight. This cleans out the bath bomb perfectly and has the advantage of not crumpling the plastic. This is what it looks like the next day, and all you have to do is rinse out the bubble. This method even works if there's a pinhole-sized opening in the plastic, so you could use this to make a more watertight bubble. The next step is how to fill them up. I find the easiest way is just to hold it under the tap. You'll have to adjust the water a bit and make sure the hole is facing the right way, but it fills up pretty quickly. This is more fragile than a nano bubble because there's an opening at the top, but you can still have lots of fun playing with it. The best part is that these are reusable, so you can always refill them if some of the water escapes. And similar to nano bubbles, you can also decorate these with glitter or acrylic paint. The openings on both of my bubbles are big enough for me to just scoop the glitter inside. I'm being very generous with the glitter here because it tends to sink to the bottom once the bubble is full. I also tried using a measuring jug to fill it up. This was mostly because I wanted to film it without having a sink in the way, but the method worked pretty well. I also experimented with a pipette, which was useful for getting the very last drops of water into the bubble. If the bubble is filled to the very top, then it looks just like a nanotape ball. It's very fun to play with, and it's not a big deal if some of the water comes out. Even if it's slightly deflated, I still love the aesthetics of this. It reminds me a lot of nano bubbles, but it's easier and cheaper to make. This got me thinking about other potential DIYs. Because this type of bubble isn't actually blown up, it's not limited to a spherical shape. It's the bath bomb and plastic cover that determines what shape it can be. So theoretically, if I can make my own bath bombs and shrink wrap them, then I can create all kinds of custom designs. And this is exactly what I intend to do with this DIY kit for making bath bombs. I've used this product once before and was pleasantly surprised at how well it worked. Bath bombs are nothing more than a mixture of baking soda with citric acid. This kit comes with packets of baking soda that already contain color and scent. You start by adding one packet into a bowl, followed by one dropper of water. I'm always amazed by how little water is required for making bath bombs. The next step is to add citric acid, and I'm kneading the package a bit to get rid of lumps. Then I'm going to mix both of these together. I find that it's much easier to just go in with your hands at some point and rub the mixture until it reaches the texture of kinetic sand. Just a few drops of water is enough to get it to this stage. 
Next, I'm going to go in with my duck mold. This, of course, is dedicated to all you has been hotel fans out there. I also watched it after getting comments under my duck videos, and now I'm deeper into the fandom than I'd like to admit. As you can see, it's very easy to create custom bath bomb shapes. Just squeeze out the shape and leave it to dry for a few hours. These pick up a fantastic amount of detail. The most important part is to use exactly the amount of water specified, even though it might not look like much. I've made some batches of bath bombs with just a bit too much water and that has a noticeable effect on the texture. It tends to look crumblier and it won't hold its shape as easily. So now comes the hardest step of this video. I need to shrink wrap these ducks so that the plastic stays in exactly the same shape. This is a fairly complex design and I'm not even sure if that's possible. I've also never shrink wrapped anything in my life before so I have no experience. I bought these plastic shrink wrap bags from Amazon and they're designed for packaging. I also bought a heat gun, but as it turns out, a hair dryer works just as well for this part. This bag feels almost exactly like cellophane and it doesn't adapt itself very well to the shape of the duck. I'm turning on the heat gun and it's super satisfying to see the foil shrink, but it's not doing exactly what I had hoped. As you can see, the shape of the plastic is entirely different to the shape of the duck because it's pulled so tightly over the head and beak. This is obviously not an issue if you're just packaging the bath bomb for sale, but I need the plastic wrapper to look like a duck as well. So I'm going to try again, and this time I'm wrapping the bag more tightly around every curve of the duck. I'm also heating it slowly so I can stop if I think it's pulling too tight. This technique actually works and I'm starting to get the hang of this. I notice that the plastic shrinks in the direction of the heat, so I have to hold the duck at different angles if I want to create a curved surface. The other problem is that whereas the heat gun is warm enough to shrink the plastic, it's not hot enough to melt it. I don't want to risk turning the heat up higher because that causes the plastic to shrink even more, which distorts the shape. In the end, I decided to use my hair straighteners to seal up the very last bit of plastic. This kind of worked, but I wouldn't really recommend it. To make it fully airtight, you'll have to use a vacuum sealer on the plastic bag before you shrink it. But considering how experimental this DIY was, I'm quite pleased that I got this far. Here are all of my shrink wrap ducks, and they look pretty great. I think you could easily sell these. But obviously, I only need the bath bomb to be a placeholder, and I'm going to dissolve it like before. I didn't have to cut a hole this time because my DIY shrink wrap wasn't fully watertight. I just placed it into the bowl, and the water was ready enough to activate the inside. This is pretty funny because it literally looks like the duck is farting. A DIY bath bomb takes much less time to dissolve compared to a store-bought one, probably because the ingredients are still fresh. Then I'm left with the outer shell, which looks like a little duck bubble. The plastic wasn't as watertight as the round bubble, so I couldn't get this to fill up with liquid. I ended up cutting a small hole at the top of the duck's head, so I can simply inflate the bubble by blowing in it. Now I'm going to add the eyes with some black glitter. This one is a cool holographic chunky mix, and I'm picking out the largest pieces. I'm using a fast drying glue designed for styrofoam and sticking the eyes into place. So here's the final result, and I think this DIY is pretty satisfying. Literally anyone can make the bath bomb version because it's so simple. Because there's a hole in it, if you try to pop the bubble, it's going to spray out like a water balloon. However, you can also refill it as many times as you like, so there's no wastage like with nanotape. If you really want to make a watertight bubble, then you have to empty it using the overnight method with a tiny pinhole-sized opening. Then you can fill it back up using a syringe. It might still leak a bit, but it's going to be sturdier than this one. I hope you like this video, and please check out some of my other weird DIYs linked below. I'm Joanna, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye!